if you're a startup and you start with no marketing budget, you're going to have a tough time because if you really want to grow, you have to communicate and, and tell the world who you are. At the beginning, play with your idea. See how far this takes you. And you're going to reach a point where you will have no other choice but to get going with mm. that. Always be nice to people. Always be willing to go the extra mile, whether it's for when it comes to doing business, with a friend, with someone that needs a bit of help. To me, the power of, of digital and uh, online and these type of platforms is the way forward with anything. It's exponential, the amount of people that you can reach out mm. in a clever way, showing what your product is. Welcome back to another episode of the Change Officer podcast that is brought to you by our friends at podster.com. If you're looking to start your own podcast, but you don't have enough bandwidth to deal with everything that goes into podcast production, hit them up. The team at podster.com will be happy to support you with consultancy, tips and tricks, and production. Today, my guest is Lorenzo Yoris. CEO of Creative Zone, Dubai-based company that empowers startups by helping them set up their business. From Argentina via Madrid and Tanzania to Dubai, we'll get insights into amazing journey of this entrepreneur who is using his enormous experience to help new businesses to succeed. Is Dubai a business heaven? What are challenges and obstacles that small businesses and nomad entrepreneurs face and how can they survive in today's competitive market? All of that and more awaits you in the next 40 minutes. Subscribe to the Change Officer, set yourself up in a comfy chair and get ready for some great advices from a global nomad with 20 years of experience in sales, management, business consultancy and corporate leadership across the globe. Enjoy. Welcome to the Change Officer, Lorenzo. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming. Um, you have a very interesting journey uh, that led you to Dubai. Uh, well, I came here in 2005 for the first time. Uh, it's an interesting story. I was actually doing a bit of work for the government of Tanzania in mm. Africa, and I was uh, representing an American television station. Um, and they, they used to tell me, they were telling me at that time, oh, American TV, very interesting, very nice. But we are more interesting, interested in what's happening in that part of the world, in this place called Dubai. And they told me, why don't you go over there and have a look and see how we could potentially do something with, when with was this. That? This was in 2005. 2005. So there was a lot happening at that time already mm -hmm. in terms of the bus that Dubai was starting to, to, to have internationally. So I came here and I fell in love with the city. At that time, I was in between cities. I was living in Madrid in, and London, but I wasn't really having a, a place where to to relocate and, and to do all the work that I was doing. And, and Dubai made a lot of sense for me at that time because I was working a lot between African countries, Middle Eastern countries, and having Emirates at that, you know, to, to, to connect you with all these cities around the world, especially Africa and the Middle East, was the perfect place. So I came here, I fell in love with the city, and I said, this is where I want to live. Wow, you were attracted by emerging markets. You, you ended up in Africa, originally from Argentina, right? Yeah. And then you ended up in Africa. How did you end up in Tanzania at all? Well, I, I, was, I was born and raised in Argentina. And in 2001, there was a very bad crisis. Even it was before the 1995, there was a very big one called the tequila crisis that started in Mexico and, and triggered all the way down to tequila South America. Crisis. <laughs> yeah, correct. That was in 1995. But then again, in 2001, there was a very big crisis. It hit Argentina very bad. And I said, all right, that's, that's enough for me. I think I need to start looking for some new places. And I ended up in Madrid, in London. In mm -hmm. In Madrid and I got a job with with a media company and, and from there is that I started traveling around the world and I uh, I ended up going to Africa and to all these exotic destinations well you need to tell me more about that maybe in a different show because sure. I'm really uh, 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 attracted to Africa one of my dreams is to um, record a podcast uh -huh. by riding a motorbike around Africa talking with uh, inspirational people who are changing the uh, that continent so maybe you can Definitely. help me make it happen have you seen this other uh, side of this uh, there's <laughs> this um um uh, playing for change all right have you have you no. seen this? so this is similar to your concept playing for change playing for change and this gentleman went all around the world to developing countries a lot in africa and he's finding people that are playing on the street music and they he records different singers different artists from around the world 
and he makes one song with 15, 20 different artists wow. all together. But he records this all into one place and it's all for charity, etc. Anyhow, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, good it's a whole new chapter. That's a good inspiration. I'm going to have a look. So today, um, so fast forward 2021, you're CEO of Creative Zone. Yeah. And you're very much involved in, 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 in the startup ecosystem and what's going on, uh, in especially in that like area of startups and smaller companies. Mm -hmm. um, where are we at today? Well, uh, it's a great industry. I mean, uh, Dubai has really positioned itself as, as one of the main cities where nowadays people are considering to start a new business, to relocate, to, 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 to start their entrepreneurial sort of journey. Uh, in the last two, three years, Dubai has, has really received a lot of entrepreneurs and investors from around the world that wanted to make Dubai their place. And mm. so for us to be at the center of that has been very exciting over the last few years. Creative Zone was established 11 years ago, but the last four or five years has seen uh, um, exponential growth in terms of the number of expats that are coming and are making Dubai their, their place. For, well, for what do you think is behind that? I think it's, it's, it's been a lot of uh, very good measures and initiatives that were set up by the government and by, by the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum in positioning uh, Dubai as uh, you know, a very open place, welcoming to foreign investors, to, to entrepreneurs to come and, and do business. There are very few cities around the world that make it that easy for any investor to come and start mm. doing business. We, it's easy. We're still, uh, uh, I'd say we're still not at the level where it's like completely flawless and, and mm -hmm. uh, super easy. Um, I've been doing some work in Singapore. You can literally set up a company in, in, in like in an hour yeah. via chatbot, for example. And yeah. they've been doing this for, for a while. Now, Dubai has improved a lot, but it's are we still completely startup friendly that someone can just show up and, and like set up a bank account, get all of the uh, advantages uh, company? or there is still some, some more work to be done? There's definitely room for improvement, quite a bit of work to be done. Uh, it's a good point, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing that you bring the case of Singapore. Really, Dubai benchmarks itself with Singapore in, in many of the, the things that Singapore has done in the way that developed certain things. And how they deal with the startups and the you know entrepreneurial ecosystem is one of them. You're very right by saying Singapore has an incredible model. It's true that you can set up a company within hours. You do it through an online portal. But for example, recently, uh, Dubai has ex uh, initiated a similar initiative. Mm -hmm. They started a new portal called investindubai.ae, mm -hmm. where you, know, you can go there, initiate. But it's true that... The, the, the system here is still a little bit more integrated, mm -hmm. a, a bit more difficult to navigate in the sense that you need to really understand what kind of activity you are you know, uh, looking to, mm -hmm. to do. What jurisdiction is the, the best one that fits the type of activity that you have? So, and on banking, you are bringing, that's, that's one aspect that still needs quite a bit of irony mm. out. So for, for example, let's take an example of a technology startup which is going to be an online platform, for example. Mm -hmm. And there is a growing amount of these kind of uh, startups. What is currently the, s the, m the, the smoothest and the most seamless way to set up a company in Dubai? Mm. What would you say? Well, uh, I, I would still say that one of the best options is to come to us and, and to do it through us because we're able to really recommend you, again, as I was saying, the best jurisdiction, the, the best type of license, the best type of activity. So many times, even if it's an e-commerce company, mm. you're able to put in your license many activities that complement what you do. Mm. Uh, and you need to understand the do's and don'ts. So for example, you're able to set up an e-commerce company in one of the free zones. Mm -hmm. But the limitations with that is that you are not able to deliver the goods that you are selling on your e-commerce platform as a company yourself because it's not within your mm. you know remit of yeah. what your license allows so if you want to set up an e-commerce company where your company has your own staff delivering the goods mm -hmm. well then you need a dubai dubai ded mainland license uh, yeah, mainland, yeah. so it's important for you to speak to somebody that can recommend you what's the different options so that but, but of course the ded license is a little bit more expensive than a free zone i remember when we came here with our original business creative 2014 we had to put in and we were a small company coming from serbia uh, we had to put in around we ended up spending around 90,000 dirhams just mm. to get us off the ground 90,000 dirhams it's a for lot of money startup. for a company start coming from from a market which is so yeah. small 
um, at the moment, what's the minimum that you need in Dubai to set up a company? Yeah, well, things have changed mm -hmm. uh, since then. So, for example, right now we are at Dubai Media City. Mm -hmm. Dubai Media City, 10 years ago, eight years ago, was the place for any media company to get started. And that's the thing. Any Dubai Media Company to get started in Dubai Media City needed to rent an office, needed to have certain... Nothing was below 100,000 dirhams, like you're saying, for including the office space, the rent. Nowadays... You know, different jurisdictions started competing with each other in the sense of offering something mm -hmm. that is more cost effective. So nowadays you can set up a, a trade license for as little as 5,750 dirhams wow. for a media license that, that does not include an office and, and other requirements and your visa, but that's the, the, the license alone. So if, even if you were to get a one visa package that is called, that includes the main investor's for visa the founder, yeah. for the founder, and the license, it goes for around 15, 16,000 dirhams. 15, 16,000 dirhams and basically you're ready to, ready to go. To get going. To get going. You can have a, a... Do you need to have the space? Or no, not? you can sign up with one of the co-working spaces mm -hmm. and, and, and sign up for... Two, two Is it required to get a license? To uh, have a space? No. no. So it's not Which required to get an office yeah. to have a license in, mm. in these free zones. Okay, that's, that, yeah, that, that's, that's a significant improvement. Indeed. Because... That's one of the uh, that's one of the first uh, roadblocks that the startups face. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start a company. We have amazing idea. We're going to bootstrap the technology. We're going to build it on our own, and then yeah. we need to set up a company, hundred thousand dirhams. Exactly. Who's going to do it? And even now, I mean, teams are all over the world. You yeah. got your IT guy sitting in an office in Bali. You got your admin people sitting in the Philippines. You got your partner maybe in Europe. Exactly. I mean, the, the concept of, of these hard offices is, is long gone. Now you need these flexible solutions to let you operate these, these companies in a globalized mm. uh, world. It's interesting to talk about startups. Numbers say that 90% of startups fail, which is probably, who knows, maybe it's even higher. Um, depending on how long do you do you look in the first two three mm. years probably 90% of them um, what are the reasons specifically for Dubai mm. that startups uh, fail what did you see yeah that, that's a good question look uh, the issue of getting started in the right direction with the right structure in the right jurisdiction it's key to mm. get started but I wouldn't say that's the main reason why a lot of the startups fail I mean many of them they get going they manage to find their ways around you know, the best solution to, to set up. And nowadays there are quite a few service providers and you have the free zones, you got DED. Everybody is a bit more open and out there. So as a, as a startup, there is quite a bit of information for you to, to get this totally wrong, yeah. right? You, you have to be, if you're getting that wrong already from the beginning, <laughs> there are big chances that... that you're not going to do <laughs> <laughs> anything else. <laughs> exactly. So I wouldn't say, you know, that... that Starting point is, a, is the big challenge. It's just an obstacle, maybe. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, you will find the ways of understanding mm. what's the best structure for your startup. Once you got that clear and you get going, I see I see two or three things that people fail. And I, I've, I've run my own businesses for, for 12, 13 years in Dubai. And I've had challenges like any other startups has. has. The, many people underestimate, uh, for example, the size of the UAE. Many startups have to understand that for them to maintain business and to survive, they need to pull business from the region, not only from Dubai. Dubai is a small place. Whatever it is that you do, it will take you two, three weeks to go through the entire profile of people that you're looking to, to meet and, and, and do business with. And, and after two, three weeks, you will realize, all right, I need to start calling again all this list of people that I wanted to. So very quickly, you realize that you need to expand into, into you know, Saudi Arabia, into Jordan, to Oman, Bahrain, Qatar, into Africa. So if you have something that it's to be uh, uh, developed regionally, especially into Africa, into the Middle East, because that's the role that Dubai plays. Mm. You are maximizing what Dubai has to give you. That, that I would say number one, point number one is people underestimate what is the, the market that they are trying to address. Mm. Point number two, I would say, I see a lot of people fail on a marketing side of things, how they communicate the benefits and what they do as a startup. Many, many good entrepreneurs have a great product, but they don't really cross that line of saying, going out there and making a big noise and communicating through social media, through digital networking. It's a massive thing. You need to go out mm. and meet hundreds of people and, and talk about what you do. Let's uh, stick to that point. 
So, for example, um, I've been uh, uh, in Dubai since 2014, visited a bunch of events, visited a bunch of networking uh, groups, uh, business clubs, and so on. And uh, out of all of the things that I did over the previous seven years, do you know which one worked the best? Tell me. Podcast. Wow. Uh, no, and it, it was funny. I mean, I, I didn't see that really coming. But, you know, Dubai is... As you say, it's a place in the Middle East. It's, it's, it's like the center of the Middle East, like the main yeah. city. And everyone comes here. Everyone wants to sell something. And then when you go to these events and networking uh, um, gatherings, you very often you end up with a lot of you know suits around you, everyone trying to sell each other, and then there's nobody to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. What's your tip? What's your tip on on uh, scaling uh, relationship building? How do you? go out there and market your product what are your tips well the, 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 i'm very passionate about this topic is to me the power of of digital and uh, online and this type of platforms uh it's 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 the way forward with anything the minute that you realize the amount of people that you can reach through these technologies and the traditional ways of doing things like yeah going to an atm and arabian travel market and walking around and maybe meeting 20 30 people in a day when you can actually create a web series or you or through you know digital advertising and seo and writing articles the it's exponential the amount of people that you can reach out mm. in a clever way showing what your product is so us as a company even in the last uh, year or two since i joined creative zone we understood this and we started going out a lot and we said what is it that we're offering and we're offering dubai as a place to set up but traditionally we were concentrating on the people that are already here and you know that they needed support in setting up the companies but through digital is is the fastest cheapest most efficient way of communicating what you do mm. and and reaching out to people where did you see the biggest return on investment when it comes to um marketing mm. um my issue and a problem at some points was i don't have a marketing budget mm. right so how do I go and market myself if I don't have a marketing budget? Well, if you're a startup and you start with no marketing budget, you're going to have a tough time. Very quickly, you need to start generating some revenue and start to allocate some of that into marketing because if you really want to grow, you have to communicate and, and tell the world who you are. Google Ads traditionally has been working really well when it comes to our industry. You know, whenever you have somebody typing the words that your business is all about let's say podcasts in dubai and vuk appears at the top mm. well you're gonna get a lot of traffic from people that are truly interested in this now if you're showing adverts on people's instagrams that talks about vuk's podcasts it's a way of you know creating awareness and and and, and creating an interest on people that were maybe not mm. not thinking about this this product so Google Ads, to me, it's, it's still a very strong way of advertising. SEO has been growing tremendously. Anybody in any field, you have to create content. You need to create articles. You need to, because, you know, Google will rank you high and you're going to start appearing on, on topics that are of interest of that industry that you're involved in. But that's a long-term game. And uh, what, what most are missing is being patient with, with, with yeah. getting the results back. Um, but then, as one of my close partners said, the best time for us to start doing SEO was 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> the next best time <laughs> is now. <laughs> but yeah, but it's never too late. It's never, it's too, never late. too late. Like you need, to, you need you, to get going. You, you need to get going. A lot of things have changed over the previous year or so, and we are all so used to having masks on our, on our elbows, you True. know, and, and on our <laughs> mouth when we go out. Um, pandemic changed a lot. A lot of industries suffered. Uh, there is a lot of new opportunities out there and a lot of industries that are growing. Um, what did you see from your angle? Mm. Uh, you know, 2021, uh, latest trends. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the biggest opportunities? Yeah, in, indeed, the whole world has gone digital. Uh, nowadays, even there, when you analyze, there's been a lot of sectors have had to adapt a lot in, into the ways that they were doing things. You walk around some of the malls in Dubai and it's not what it used to be five, six, seven years ago when you had this mall boom. Uh, you can see that a lot of the of the transactions now are happening online. I mean, in my own home, I open the door every day and my wife has bought something new every day. I don't know where the things are coming from. Uh, so there is a real trend happening on that. 
Um, so the world has truly gone digital. So anything that you are involved in that is not thinking on that direction of mm. digital e-commerce, you reaching out to your potential clients on a digital way, I think you are missing out on a, on a big part. So as we've seen an, an upsurge in, in e-commerce type of companies being set up, uh, massive, a lot of the e-business is e-businesses, platforms, all sort of companies that are web related, online, e-commerce related, a massive increase. Is there a, an industry that you would make a bet on? Well, I was very bullish on crypto up uh -huh. until <laughs> two, three weeks ago. <laughs> Uh, and I've seen that tumble down quite badly. To be frank, I don't know where we stand when it comes uh -huh. to crypto right now. We created as a company recently a package called Cryptopreneur. Oh, really? Yeah. So because we've seen that the Dubai has been attracting a lot of cryptopreneurs and that doesn't necessarily mean people that are involved in building exchanges for trading, but these are people that have their own cryptos, hold their own wallets with cryptos, and they thought that Dubai is a good place for them to come and empty their wallets in, in Dubai. But for that, they need to become residents of the country and they need to check the laws and the regulations when it comes to, because everybody is trying to pay the least tax possible mm. for emptying their, their wallets. And, and Dubai is it's, it's a good place for that. You need to uh, either sign out from the country of residency that you are, in, let's say, in, in Europe, so that you can show back to your home country and say, well, now I'm a Dubai resident. Mm -hmm. uh, I live here for X amount of days a year because uh, then it means that you are not allowed to live uh, 180 days, let's say, depending on country to country, yes. the, the law is different. So you need to find out what are those, you know, internal rules so that you can play that properly. But yes, many people are coming to Dubai. They're making themselves Dubai resident. They're choosing Dubai as their next place. Uh, some people have found themselves, you know, millionaires overnight with, with the upswing that this took. And it's, they're rethinking uh, where they're treated best uh, when it comes to, you know, their financial position. And yeah. Dubai is a place that is welcoming those type of... So introducing a topic of nomad crypto entrepreneur. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> You're very uh, passionate about, and you'll be talking about that a lot, um, about uh, nomad uh, entrepreneurs. True, indeed. That's, you know, again, going back to the topic of, you know, the, the world becoming this global village and everything has gone online and the way that we operate businesses, that's exactly how it is. Entrepreneurs nowadays are nomad entrepreneurs. People that are selling services or goods or, or crypto or whatever that is. People need flexibility nowadays. T -t Today you're in, in Dubai. Next week you need to have meetings in London. You're going to Singapore. You're going to Hong Kong. You're moving to New York. Um, so people are constantly on the move, although, you know, Corona times have really restricted the way that we move, but not restricted the way that we do business. Mm. And especially the way that we want to operate our businesses. Nowadays, people understand that I can work from home, I can work from anywhere in the world. Well, I can also decide where is the best place for me to set up my company and operate from. And Dubai is a great address for you to hold your business. You can have a management consultancy firm. You show that your, Dubai, your office and your company is set up in Dubai. You have a Dubai address. You operate globally. You have clients all over the world. Mm. Well, it's a great place where why would you be paying 30% tax in some other country that you used to operate where you can do it in a country like Dubai that will charge you zero personal and corporate tax. Yeah. No, that's true, definitely. Uh, on the other side, I mean, Dubai is not most famous for being cheap city uh, mm. to live in, although things are changing mm. due to different reasons. But we are still not Bali when you say, you know, when you say nomad, the entrepreneur, most of the people think about, you know, Southeast Asia, traveling Thailand, Bali, and then doing business from there. But Dubai is trying to position with new v types of visas and so on as a hub for, for nomad uh, entrepreneurs. True. True. At what level do you need to be with your business so coming to Dubai makes sense? Yeah. No, look, it's a very good point. I mean, Dubai is not Bali when it comes to, you know, the cost Expensive of living. Cost and, of living and, um, yeah. uh, but that, again, I think a lot has changed on that. I think if you want to live and start operating on a budget in Dubai, you can. 
I mean, rents have dropped a lot, although they've increased uh, in the last four or five months after this upswing that we've seen that Dubai has been benefiting over what has happened around the world. We've seen people from all over the world flocking into Dubai and escaping um, lockdowns in Europe and other parts of the world. And Dubai has been really growing. Uh, but again, I don't think Dubai is as expensive. If, you're, if you want to look for more affordable places, you can. You, you have some areas in uh, JVC nowadays and TCOM and where you can rent a studio for, for not some crazy amounts and very similar to, you know, um, typical European cities. Of course, I, st I still feel Asian countries will be still cheap, but Asian countries will charge you tax. Mm -hmm. So Bali is not tax free. So you, yeah. could, you could be a nomad entrepreneur and live cheaply in Bali, but when you calculate the tax that you need to pay for the businesses that you're doing, well, I don't know if, if you know, apples to apples then comparing what you're saving on tax in Dubai will actually be more beneficial for you to be based in Dubai. And the other point, somebody will always need, you will need to travel. Dubai will connect you with the rest of the world in, in uh, direct flights, when every, anything in any city. Mm. So that's another massive plus. The idea of becoming geographically independent is very attractive. And a lot of people, especially now during pandemic, most of the people stayed at home, they were working remotely. A lot of people out there thought about, maybe I can move to, I don't know, Greece and work from Greece or move somewhere else. Um, but you, most of the company policies are still not of uh, design to recognize something like that because there are a lot of legal issues you cannot just be uh, hired by a company in UAE and go work from from Greece if you want to become geographically completely independent probably what you need to do you need to become an entrepreneur yeah um, how do you make that leap how do you make a decision to to you know drop what you have and and and, and become an entrepreneur uh I, I, look, I immediately when you're bringing this question, I, I try to think how it happened to me. And I suggest and I, this, I give this as an advice to any entrepreneur that is start looking to start a new business. And especially the young people, you know, what I always suggest is at the beginning, play with your idea. See how far this takes you. And you're going to reach a point where you will have no other choice but to get going with mm. that. So in my case, when my idea of starting a media company started, I said, Okay, let me, and I started writing some letters to some TV stations, ABC television and the BBC, and they were saying, yeah, we will air your TV shows. And I had never aired or produced any TV program in the world, in, in, in my life. And I never hold or operated a TV camera. And then uh, I said, okay, let me go and set up a company. And I ended up at that time, the BVI was a very uh -huh. sort of traditional way of, of setting up these offshore type of companies. and. So I opened a BVI company within a few weeks and then I opened a, a bank account and then I started, I built my website and uh, I, start, had, I still had my job, but I was still doing all those things on the side. And then I remember writing my first letter to the prime minister of, of Tanzania and I said, I would like to come to Tanzania and shoot an interview with you with my TV program on ABC television. And uh, they said, yes, we will we'll be more than happy. And then I had no other choice but to get going with my company. So uh, that's what I recommend everybody at the beginning. Get, start playing with your idea, start building everything around it. And the next thing you know, you're gonna find yourself in a place that you have no other choice but to get going. But if you, if you suddenly quit your job and then start building your website and then start talking to the media companies and start talking to the prime minister or whatever, uh, that's going to take you another four or five months to get all that organized. It's, it's if you're lucky. E exactly. <laughs> Let's switch gears uh, um, a bit now, talk more about your personal side, um, your, some of the lessons that you're learning in life, some of the philosophies, for example, um, and it, this is the question that I ask quite a lot. Uh, Ray Dalio wrote that book, Principles, and it's an interesting book, and he's outlining a lot of his personal and professional principles that he's following in his life and in, 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 in companies. What are some of your life principles, philosophies that you are, you know, really sticking to? Mm. That's an interesting topic. Um, there's a few things to this. Look, uh, 
Point number one, for example, I'm a very superstitious type of guy. <laughs> I, I'm in my head constantly thinking about the things that come to me and the things that I'm doing for others. It's, it's a constant sort of equation that is being run in my head. And whenever I feel that I'm not doing or I'm not providing certain, I'm not being nice to people, or I realize that the output that I'm going to get from the other external world of things that I want to achieve are, are not going to are not going to happen. Some of the principles that come to my mind is, is these things. Uh, always be nice to people. Always be willing to, to, to go the extra mile, whether it's for, for f when it comes to doing business, with a friend, with someone that needs a bit of help. Always be open and be out there to listening to what nature is sending your way, whether it's someone that needs help or someone that you have to help because of a business transaction. But if you have that good heart for everything that you do sort of all of these things come back to you in life giving and and, and getting back 100 uh, percent. a part of those philosophies i, I learned them through uh, when i started doing this media work and i, I started to travel around africa quite a quite a bit uh, i must say i went through a bit of a, a sort of uh, moment in my life i was asking asking myself so many questions you know about life about you know poverty about you know, the way that these countries were developing and, and everywhere we go, we went, we were always trying to help people. So we, we, we did a bit of work in Zambia. I remember that time we were shooting these TV programs, but then we always had a way of inclining into the social side of things. We started meeting people that had orphanages and people that were helping orphan kids and people with HIV AIDS and, and orphan kids from HIV parents that they were left. But at that time that I was asking myself so many questions, I, I remember one morning I was playing squash in a hotel that I was staying and this gentleman comes to me and, and says, can I play with you? And I said, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I'm actually all the time looking for someone to play with. There's, there's nobody here to play squash with me. So we started playing and he tells me, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm shooting a series of TV programs to promote Zambia for investors and tourism. And he says, very nice. And I said, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm a priest and I came to Zambia to to, to, in a series of shows, uh, road shows that we're doing to, to, to you know, to, to preach the, the, the word of God and, uh, and other things. And I've never been too much of a religious person myself. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a spiritual type of guy. But I did start investigating a little bit more about, you know, he, what he would recommend, his advice. And he asked me, if you would put it in a, in a nutshell, in, in a few words, what's the main question that you have? And I said, well, in a few words, I would say my main, que my main question is, what is my purpose in life? And he says, okay, wait a minute. And he goes back to his room, he comes back, and he brings me a book titled, What is my purpose in life? Right? So, and he had written this book. And after reading this book and many other sort of uh, 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 articles, and I started doing research and reading the Bible and uh, the Quran and, 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 and anything that related to, 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 to religion and, and, and things like this, I, I came with, with, with one philosophy and I, and I said m my purpose in life was purely to be out there, to help people whenever possible and just to be nice to people all around. And from that day, I kind of started implementing a bit of these philosophies. And it's, it's funny how nature, whether you want to call it God or nature or anything that is th this bigger being that you describe starts sending you people that need help or people that you can influence and how you react to this is what determines everything else that comes back to you very inspiring <laughs> thank you thanks for coming lorenzo you're, mo you're most welcome thank you for having me uh, the great conversation great chat um i hope that you guys enjoyed um i hope that you like what we're doing here with the change officer podcast so please uh, give us your support by liking and subscribing if you have any questions for lorenzo or me you can reach out anytime directly via linkedin yeah um we'll be happy to get back to you and stay tuned there is another amazing uh, guest coming on next monday thanks lorenzo for coming thank on. you Vuk. thank you for having me